Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. You do that every time. G'day, fans, and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Can you believe it? It's actually our 20th episode. How good is that? We've been on for 20 weeks, effectively. That's insane, isn't it, when you think yeah. about it? So uh, we've got people joining us already. We've got Greg joining us. It was absolutely fantastic. So we started this in April, and we're now almost into And Actually, no, we are in September now. And, of course, we're still chugging along, going, cutting through the whole cur COVID curfew and all the rest of it. So if you're stuck at home with nothing to do, sitting here watching us, then that just goes to show how sad lives are. So uh, we uh, have a very, very big show for you tonight, but I can't get anywhere without by introducing my lads. So lads, how are we tonight? I'm good. Very good. Yeah, good. All right. We've got to move on. Otherwise, we'll be here for hours. We don't want to do uh, last even last week. We ran over time. So we have a presentation that we want to uh, bring up. <laughs> <laughs> I did actually like it, which is good, um, about uh, Flash Gordon. So there we go. Here we go. I'm going to press a couple of buttons and I'm going to call this up. Now, Jeffro, this is all yours, old son. You wanted to bring this up. So uh, tell us, what's the, what's the deal? Go for it. Yeah, well, it is the, uh, the 40th anniversary of uh, Flash Gordon. So back in 1980, we were uh, going to the cinema as well. Some of us were at least. Uh, to be able to see this uh, major spectacle. And I do remember uh, it was a spectacle on the big screen. So um, it was a mixture of uh, uh, special effects, uh, fantastic queen music, uh, colourful costumes and over-the-top acting. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, you either loved it or hated it. So yeah. uh, we're going to celebrate uh, 40 years of, of Flash Gordon and um, if you like Bill and you've got the uh, anniversary discs, well, uh, I think you might be given that a spin sometime this year. Now, before we go any further, MPS, are you familiar with the movie at all? Have you seen it? Do you know much about it? Oh, please. Have I seen it? I, yes, I have. And I watched <laughs> it the other day. I love the original black and white series where they would go around in circles, landing and taking off. See? Well, it's funny you should mention that. So, Jeffra, off you go, son. Yeah, so basically Flash Gordon originated, originated in 1934 by the uh, legendary comic strip artist Alex Raymond. So Flash Gordon was set as a, just a standard science fiction adventure, uh, and it, of course, is well known for inspiring the, um, the modern version of Star Wars, which uh, George Lucas unfortunately couldn't get the rights for, so he had to create it something of his own. So that is um, the uh, origins of Flash Gordon. So the next one we have here. All right is George, as you know, couldn't get the uh, the rights to um, do Flash Gordon because he found out that Dino De Laurentiis had already bought them. So, uh, unfortunately, not happy with Dino. So, uh, yeah. sad face emoji there. See, it's funny because when you see not happy Dino, the th first thing I thought it was Fred Flintstone's dog. Like, <laughs> bad Dino. <laughs> but anyway, move on, move on. So in terms of the uh, the people that Dino wanted to uh, direct, the first one we have here in the next slide is uh, acclaimed uh, Italian director Federico Fellini. So uh, primarily known for art house movies, um, he was um, uh, chosen to to do the movie, but he decided that maybe it wasn't quite for him. So unfortunately, we never got to see. Um, uh, Frederico directing um, this this movie, so he had to turn somewhere else. And the next director we saw is uh, Alex, sorry, Nicholas Rogue to make the film. So Nicholas Rogue was actually an admirer of the original comic strips, and he actually spent a year uh, doing pre-production work on it. However, um, it was interesting because he had some definitely some interesting um, uh, thoughts about it. He wanted to see uh, Debbie Harry as Princess Aura and Keith Carradine as Ming. Uh, so originally, Kurt Russell was uh, the main choice by D'Lo Drentis to play Flash, but he, uh, I don't know, wisely turned it down. Arnold Schwarzenegger also turned it down, and um, 
it was essentially because of the fact that uh, he had that thick Austrian accent. So there was some of the uh, interesting casting that uh, Nicholas Rogues and D Dino were actually uh, were looking at. So unfortunately, uh, Nicholas never became the director. So the next one on the list is Sergio Leone, who you probably know from all the Spaghetti Westerns. Uh, he hadn't directed since the early 70s, so it was a bit of a long uh, spell for him. So uh, even though, you know, he hadn't been working for a while, he actually turned it down. So the, the next person on the list, I mean, it's a long list, is Nicholas, sorry, is Mike Hodge. So um, Mike Hodge is best known for uh, being the director of the movie Get Carter with Michael Caine, and there's a, a shot uh, that you see there. Okay, so the uh, the next one we have is uh, in terms of the script. Now, Dino wanted to make something very humorous. He wanted to make something that uh, it was probably never really intended to be. I mean, if you ever saw the uh, original comics and such, it was it was never supposed to be um, uh, what this movie ended up with. So. Um, one of the prime examples of maybe sort of uh, a little bit of OTT and campiness here was uh, Prince Fulton, played by Brian Blessed. So, yes, Gordon's alive. Okay, next one we have is that um, he at one point approached uh, Star Trek writer uh, Samuel Peoples to actually write the uh, script. And as it says there, he's most famous for writing the um, uh, the episode when no man has gone before. But um, sadly, that one didn't happen. I don't think he wanted to write anything sort of the way that uh, Dino had uh, thought about it. So if you were looking at people that love over-the-top campy scripts, there's one person that uh, did actually come to mind and was the man, and that is... Lorenzo Semple Jr. So as you can probably tell, he was one of the um, the founders in writing the 1966 television show Batman. And of course, we know how that, um, that played out. So um, he was actually, as I said, uh, uh, keen to actually look at uh, writing that. And uh, he'd actually worked with Dino De Laurentiis uh, before because he'd worked on... Uh, uh, Three Days of the Condor in 1975 and the King Kong remake in 1976. So really an, an, an obvious choice for the uh, the person to uh, to write it. Now we're going to look at the, uh, the casting. Okay, so here we have Sam J. Jones, whose actual middle initial is actually G. Uh, now he first appeared in the movie 10, so uh, prior to that, he'd done a spread for Playgirl magazine, and I thought, wouldn't it be funny to be able to sort of find the cover for that? But when I put in um, Sam Jones' Playgirl, well, what I've seen cannot be unseen. So, uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, um, yeah. So, so you, um, got, you got a lot of flash, did you? I, I got a lot of flash and a lot of, ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Actually, put a put an action figure of him on top of your camera, and that'd be the camera flash. <laughs> he, he, he would also make a good tripod. Uh, yeah. But uh, Dino described him as a buff American boy in great shape, even capable of acting. So they actually had to dye his hair blonde for the role as the uh, quote unquote all American hero. So in the uh, the comics, Flash was actually a polo player. So they changed it to um, American football because that's obviously more sellable than uh, polo. And do you remember uh, what team you played for? And um, as we, a lot of people famously uh, know. Yeah, Jeff Rowe, what team did he play for? Uh, um, you got me on that one. Um, I've got a mental blank. Uh, disappointing. MPS, you um, should know. You only just saw the movie the other week. Yeah, same thing, mental blank. Oh, jeez. Okay, there you go. I know people will be going to be rewriting the answers up very, very quickly. New York Jets. He was the quarterback. New York Jets. Thank you. Yes. Green. So there you go. We've actually got a trivia quiz at the end of this at the end of the presentation. So uh, don't run away, everybody. So anyway, Jeffrey, continue. 
Yeah, so, uh, I mean, famously, uh, we all know that um, Sam and Dino had a, a falling out uh, during the uh, uh, the end of the production. So it ended up uh, meaning that uh, Sam was uh, dubbed completely out. So what we actually see in the movie is not his uh, voice. And as a result, um, Sam refused to do any sequels. So this is why we only have the uh, the one, one movie. Not that it really lit the box office alight, but uh, as I said, it uh, just meant that uh, it, it was never going to um, uh, ever find a, a sequel in the works. Very good. So the next uh, actor we have is uh, Melody Anderson. So she's actually a Canadian in real life and she'd done some television work <laughs> uh, as well as um, she had uh, done cheerleading. So uh, that made it perfect for her to be able to sort of uh, uh, sort of work with um, Sam Jones in terms of that. Um, yeah, that's it. Go flash, go. In terms of that that part of the uh, the movie, uh, she had a really hard time uh, with the uh, the movie because uh, she wasn't uh, really well trained. But as I said, she wasn't really hired for uh, acting skills. And um, and now, if you're wondering, if anybody's wondering what this photo is from, because it does look a tad suspicious, she was in a, uh, a movie called Playboy Centerfold, in which she was actually a police officer uh, doing centerfold work. So if you're wondering why the police hat's there, that's the reason. See, yeah, I, I, so. I, I think that Jeffro has done this unfairly for the for the for our ladies watching. You know, this is for the guys. There should have been a shirtless, you know, flash at least. You know, I think you've gypped the girls tonight, dude. Well, um, is that if you want to after this, just go Sam Jones play girl, uh, knock yourself out, girls. So, uh, <laughs> but we're we're a reasonably family friendly show. So uh, I thought, well, I was looking for a picture of her <laughs> early work, but it really wasn't there. So I thought, well, I'll just take what I can get, and this was it. Yeah, because this picture is so family friendly, isn't it? So, uh, but anyway, let's move well, on. It shall is. <laughs> She's uh, obviously yeah, move on, move on. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> so, well, she um, she also uh, wasn't a big fan of Dino, and she actually uh, wanted to leave the production. But fortunately, uh, as that she was persuaded to stay and uh, and not leave. I'll tell you one uh, thing that's come up so far in this entire presentation: the amount of quotes that people are presenting at the moment. People are really dialed into this program, so uh, it's good to see. So hopefully that. Uh, Knowledge will translate into the trivia quiz we've got later on. So, anyway, Jeffrey, keep going, man. Yeah. So, uh, on the next uh, slide, we have um, uh, some of the um, other actors that have um, uh, played, and of course, uh, Brian Bless. So, uh, he was uh, he was an easy one to sign up because he was a big fan of um, uh, Flash Gordon and has been quoted as saying that playing Volton was uh, his lifelong dream. So he admit, admitted that that um, his most embarrassing moment uh, in his film career was actually working on this and unconsciously realising he was making boom and pew pew noises uh, when he was actually uh, doing his acting. So uh, the uh, director had to call cut. Brian, next time we put in the sound effects. So uh, he, he loved playing the role and had uh, obviously a lot of fun it's actually a very um, common problem yeah. on sci-fi movies where people are shooting laser guns and because there's no sound effect, they're putting the sound effect in themselves. Mm, um, Star yeah. Wars, it happened on Star Trek, it happened. And people actually, actors have to be trained not to do it. So uh, it's actually a very, very common issue. Ah. He was uh, he was guilty as charged, my lad. Yep. The, uh, the next actor we had joined the cast was um, uh, Max von Sydow. Uh, as Ming the Merciless, and he was very interested from the uh, from the start. And again, another fan. He had read the comic strip uh, when he was a boy, and he liked it very much. So he wasn't too hard to uh, convince to uh, to come on board. So also uh, some of the other actors that we had with the next slide. Now I don't know if anyone actually recognizes this guy. I will yep. put out that challenge. Yep. Anyone recognize him? Yep, yep, yep. Now, don't, oh, mention the don't mention the character's name, although somebody probably will, but who's the actor? That's the key the thing. The actor so. is a name, uh, an actor by the name of William Hootkins, who That's plays right. Dr. Zarkov's assistant. So, um, 
let's and, he, let's, and he, he's more famous for he's made and he's more famous for playing Porkins, Red Six, and Star Wars. Very good. And also in terms of Star Wars, we saw Kenny Baker, who played a uh, dwarf in the film. So, uh, as you might say, a very small part. He was also in Raiders of the Lost Ark as well as one of the two uh, Secret Service guys who visits Indy when they're looking at the book. So, yep, very good. Now, um, another part of the um, uh, the film and a very big part of that is the soundtrack. So uh, we have Queen. Now, Queen wasn't actually Mike Hodges' first choice for the soundtrack. Uh, apparently, they had thought about um, getting Pink Floyd to do the movie. That would have been very, very interesting. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing is that uh, Dino De Laurentiis had actually never heard of Queen before. Hmm. So um, when uh, when it came up, uh, his famous quote was, "Who are the Queens?" <clears throat> so so it it was actually Queen's idea to put the uh, the dialogue in the um, in the music. So that's where I think a lot of the uh, the quotes that we do lovingly remember actually come from because on Flash's theme, there were um, many of those um, great quotes. Yeah, in the um, main theme, in the main theme, the, in the, the seven-inch single, there's a lot more talking added into it, whereas mm. in the album version, there's no dialogue at all. And the album version is the one to listen to if you don't want all the movie effects put in. But the rest of the soundtrack does have dialogue interspersed uh, throughout. So there you go. And it we did find out that uh, Brian May and Roger Deacon were actually big fans of the serial. Uh, that came out so that gave them um, uh, cause to really want to sort of come on board and do this uh, big budget movie now uh, they were given basically license to do what they like so um, they they also got that creative freedom to sort of be as bold and experimental as they uh, wanted to be yeah. the album reached uh, number 10 in the UK charts and number 23 in the US charts, and I think it also had very similar success here in Australia as well. Now, here's one for you. Now, we've actually discussed this on other shows about um, getting spoilers in movies and TV shows, right, especially from soundtracks and videotapes and whatever else. And, of course, if you ever saw, like, Star Wars The Phantom Menace, when you turned over the back, it said, you know, Qui-Gon's funeral. Oh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Well, if you've not watched the film Flash Gordon, this is back in 1980 and you bought the soundtrack first, you would have seen the track Execution of Flash. So you could have assumed... <laughs> that he actually died in the movie. So I'd be like, oh, my God, spoiler alert. Uh, so uh, isn't that an interesting one? So, um, yes, and, of course, he uh, gets resurrected, as we well know. So there you go. So the um, the movie itself, it, um, it was a hit internationally and fared very well with the critics. So uh, currently it holds an 82% uh, approval rating on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, which is pretty good. Um However, at the time, um, Sam Jones was um, uh, nominated for a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Actor. So, uh, I mean, he's never, ever sort of considered himself a, um, a thespian, but uh, uh, as I said, certainly he was uh, awarded with that Rotten Actor Award. Uh, the, the writer offered this reflective nugget, and I'm just going to read it out. Star Wars was a realistic movie in its own crazy way. It wasn't done campy. They, expect, they expected something like Star Wars. Flash Gordon was just basically silly in an expired way. So I think that's sort of um, very insightful. I mean, we, we were enjoying Star Wars and this was nothing like Star Wars. And I think there was that backlash. Um, now, are we going to get any um, sequels? Well, we don't know, but uh, there was rumours that Matthew Vaughan uh, as you see pictured here, was looking at uh, trying to do something. But uh, uh, like a lot of stuff on the internet, uh, we just don't know for sure. Very good. So Thank that um, basically wraps up our um, little trivia uh, segment for uh, Flash Gordon. So uh, go out and um, watch the movie, enjoy it, and um, and have a lot of fun. Thank you. I would actually argue, well done, sir. I would actually argue that the soundtrack is what made the film successful. A lot of people would have seen it just because of the uh, the music, and I think without that, it would have uh, really kind of struggled because uh, if it was just a normal soundtrack, uh, Queen fans wouldn't have seen it, for example. So, uh, I mean, it obviously worked because they went on to do Highlander and all the rest of it. So, uh, but, uh, but, yeah, as we've seen, there's a lot of quotes that come out of it. I, I love the fact the film had a lot of colour 
you know, because prior to that, a lot mm -hmm. of movies were very dull and dark. You know, Star Trek, the motion picture, Alien, Star Wars, whatever, they were just like very, very dull. And then you get this thing that's called grown, the chrome and the red and all that, and absolutely fantastic, really, really pretty to look at. So, um, yeah, and the pinball machine was awesome too. Any further, any extra <laughs> reflections? It was, yeah. It, although it used to have the voices on it, and it sounded like Ming, Ming was saying uh, Emperor of the Ukivus, not the universe, but uh, that's maybe that's how I heard it back when I was a little kid. MPS, you got anything you want to add? Yeah, I I like the film a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, I love the the soundtrack, especially the the song Flash. That's always playing in the car, um, and like these guys, the quotes are coming through and all that sort of stuff. Yep. So, um, I know I know you're not a fan of the that version with the quotes and and the that sort of no. thing, um, no. but no, I, I do. It's a it's a it's a fun film. It's one of those ones. I watched it the other night. I chucked on the surround sound, and it, it was just it was fun. Yeah. Absolutely good. Yeah, very, very cool. Final words, Jeffro, before I move on to the next bit. Yeah, I mean, one of the other interesting things was that this um, use of a band sort of in many ways paved the way towards some um, other people using um, uh, bands in, um, in in movies, and the classic case in point was uh, Toto uh, for June. Mm, so, yeah, um, yeah set, set the trend. Yeah, I would argue, uh, based on a discussion we had a couple of weeks ago, they don't need to remake Flash Gordon. It's perfect in its own way and uh, should be remembered uh, for that accordingly. So there you go. And Derek has still got a VHS copy, which is kind of groovy. So well done, Jeff Rowe. Now, we've got a little bit of time at our sleeve. So I chucked this together today, right? It's the El Cheapo Quickie <laughs> Movie Trivia Quiz. Now, if you're not an expert in Flash Gordon, don't stress because it's all multiple choice, right? So just a bit of mucking around. Keep your own scores. I'll test these two because they they've let me down already with a couple of uh, a couple of answers uh, questions answered incorrectly. And uh, so, as I said, there's no right. We're just mucking around for for a bit of a gag, right? So uh, there you go. So let's get started. Is everybody ready for a bit of tri nerdy trivia about Flash? No, I've just got to log into uh, Wikipedia. Okay, uh, no, oh, no, sorry. No, I no plug it in and yeah, good on you. No cheating. No googling. No nothing. Okay, okay. Here we go. Um, Oh, here's, here's one for you. I like this. Who used M Wings, Ming's wedding vows in their own wedding? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a classic. So uh, anyway, enough of the talking. Let's start answering questions, shall we? So folk, first one, as I said, a bit of mucking around. Who was Zarkov's assistant? Funnily enough, we saw a picture of him earlier. Was it A, Bunsen? Was it B, Munson? Was it C, Funson? Or was it D, Eagle? <laughs> so, can, I, uh, can I phone a friend, Eddie? Yeah, good on you. So, uh, but we saw the we saw the photograph of him earlier. Dude who ended up in Star Wars and raised the Lost Ark. So he's been around and done very well for himself. And uh, yes, yeah, very very cool. All right, next question. So as I said, keep your own score. We're having a bit of fun with this. All right. So who was the leader of Ardentia? Was it Prince Baron, Prince or A Prince Baron, B Prince Thun, C Prince Volton, or D Prince Edward? <laughs> <laughs> A bit of sounds, sounds like a dental floss, uh, Dentia. Yeah, I know. Uh, it does, eh? So, uh, yeah. And all these are mentioned on screen too, by the way. So I don't have to really think about which ones are the right ones to uh, to ask because there was a couple of really good questions I could have put forward, but a little bit uh, difficult for some people. So there you go. All right, question three. Which organisation does Clytus work for? A, the Imperial Federal Police, B, the Imperial Intelligence Police, C, the Imperial Secret Police, or D, ASIO? So, ASIO. Uh, the uh, either you two, either you two know the answer to this one. I'm having a guess. All right, very very cool. So there you go. What do you reckon it is? I'm thinking that it was going to be C, but that seems too obvious. So I was going to go B, but that's right. just my uh, my guess. NPS. I was I was going to say C. All right, cool. I'll get the answers later on. Very good. All right, so there's only seven questions, so we're going to get through this pretty quickly. Question four, what magazine does the plane's co-pilot hold up featuring Flash on the cover? Is it A, oh, I one. B, Life, C, Women's Weekly, or D, The Force, which was the news that I, I edited for the Star Walking fan club. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so it's definitely not D. So there you go. There's a hint for you. So uh, there you go. It's uh, one of those things. You go, yeah, yeah, very cool. Look at this. All the letters are coming through. See, people are writing the answers, but I don't know which question they're answering. So. <laughs> <laughs> the answer and question also, one. Now here's the, I love this one. Bonus point. What was the name of the co-pilot's kid? Because he wants an autograph from Flash Gordon. And he actually asks, what's the kid, the name of the kid? Freaking ridiculous name, but uh, there you go. There's the bonus point. So there you go. Question five. Once married to Ming, Dale was to obtain what title? Empress of the Hour, Empress of the Week, Empress of the Month, or the, just as the Mrs. 
<laughs> oh dear so there you go if you two got an idea for this one oh yeah i know this one yeah it's a bit of an easy these are easy i, I could have made really really hard questions but i chose not to so there you go all right here to go question six name the ship dispatched to bring back flash gordon's body is it a detol b pino clean d c c ajax or d nifty <laughs> Well, this one they name in the Queen's song, so uh, everyone think of the song and uh, it'll come to you. Well, actually, Colin mentioned it earlier, but he got the name wrong. He actually said two names and only one of them was correct, so and I'll, I'll get to that in the answer. Well, so Pino cleans two names. What? Pino cleans two names. That's true. The, the o, what does the O stand for? Yeah, it's very it's, good. It's and finally, all right, when you want answers quickly, you need to whip out the what? A, the ball worms, B, the more worms. C, the tall worms, or D, just bring out the nerds. <laughs> yeah, nerds. <laughs> oh, dear. Very, very, very good. Uh, yes, all right. So, very. That's, anyway, so I hope you've got your own answers there. As I said, I just mm -hmm. made this up. It was just a bit of mucking around. So, <laughs> if you don't get seven out of seven, actually be eight because you got the, bu the bonus question, I'd be very disappointed. You should at least get your eight questions right. All right, answers. So, let's get into it. Straight to muck around. Who was Zarkov's assistant? Now, what did you two think? Uh, I thought Munson. Yeah. Okay. What are you at, MPS? Yeah, B, Munson. Yeah, very good. So Munson is correct. All right. So he only mentions his name like once, I think. Um, so sorry, Munson, missed your opportunity. So, uh, yes, very, very cool. All right. So who was the leader of Ardentia? So uh, uh, what do you two think? Prince Thun. What about you, MPS? Oh, I was going to say A. Really? Prince Baron? No, he's in charge of uh, Arboria, mate. So uh, actually, uh, Jeffro was correct. It was, it was Prince Thun. That's what he tries to stab uh, Ming. And it's one of, probably one of the rare times they actually have different coloured blood in like sci-fi movies. So instead of being red, it was like blue or something. So you can have as much gore as you want because blue blood nobody really gives a shit. So uh, uh, I thought that was quite good. But Prince Thun. So uh, yeah, he mentions his name on screen. So there you go. All right, Q3. Which organisation does Clytus work for? So now, uh, Jeffrey, you said B, is that right? I thought B, but, I mean, the answer I think is probably C, but it just seems too obvious. What about you, MPS? Oh, I was saying C. C, yeah, you're absolutely right. The Imperial, General Clytus oh, of the Imperial Secret Police. So, uh, should as have I said, gone with the gut. Yeah, there you go. So you could have gone with ASIO if you wanted to, so uh, there you go. <laughs> very, very cool. All right, so what magazine does uh, – I actually got the answer right there. So does the Flames cope? Planes Copolar hold up. Yeah, it's People, People. Magazine. So, yeah. yeah. Did you, either of you two know that one? I did, actually. I didn't even know the pic it was in the picture, but uh, I did know that one. Yeah, very good. I was hoping someone would pick the force because I could have done a, a, a newsletter cover with uh, what's his name on it. So uh, there you go. Very, very cool. Uh, yes, it was People Magazine, uh, for those who didn't know. And the bonus point, what was the name of the dude's kid? Anybody know? Uh, Rapunzel. You're very close, actually, in a, in a lot of ways. Um, what do you reckon? <laughs> Like so he says, like Mr. Gordon, can you autograph this for my kid? Sure. What's his name? Uh, what do you reckon it is? Bob. <laughs> ah, you're very close. No. You both are actually very, very close. Does start with a B. It is Buzz. What a Buzz. freaking stupid name for a kid. So um, there you go. How good is that? Eh? Very, very cool. Buzz. Hey, Buzz. Yeah, there you go. Very good. All right, so let's move on, shall we? Uh, once married to Ming, Dale was to obtain what title? So you two should. This is an easy one. So Empress of the Hour. Empress of the Hour. Empress mm -hmm. of the Hour. Exactly right. You know, not to blast her into space until such time as you grow weary of her. I do. I do not. So, uh, yes, exactly right. Empress of the Hour. So uh, Ming the Merciless, ruler of the universe. Exactly. Very, very cool. So there you go. Uh, very good. Uh, yeah, was, yeah, Kelvin. Uh, yeah, Buzz. That wasn't his real name. That was just the nickname, Buzz Aldrin. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, so would that be right? Yeah. You're an uh, astronaut. Yeah, people should be nodding their heads here. Yeah, yeah, that is, so there that's you actually right. It's his nickname. And and Buzz in 1980, I think, would have been a lot older than uh, the kid that uh, for the pilot. So there you go. All right. So Q6. All right. Name the ship dispatched to bring back Flash's body. I know some people have answered this one already. Uh, you two. What do you reckon it is? Ajax. Very good. Now, um, uh, Colin said earlier, Warhawk and Ajax. No, it's War Rocket. Dispatch War Rocket Ajax to bring back his body. You've got to get the body right. The, the, the pronunciation is very, very important. So there you go, body. So uh, there you go. And what's her name, by the way? Um, Queen of the Nile. No. 
<laughs> no. Uh, is that her name's mentioned on screen as well? MPS, you should know this. You only saw the movie a couple of days ago. Yeah, I was asleep through that part. Oh, so. There you go. General <laughs> Carla. So there you go. So uh, she's a bit of a mean part. Remember when she died, she just melted into like black oil, which is kind of groovy. So uh, they're very, very cool. Actually, uh, and speaking of Star Wars references, uh, when um, uh, Zarkov says to remove an imager from one of the agents, the agent they're taking it off is John Hollis. And, of course, he appeared in The Empire Strikes Back as what? Uh, Admiral Motti. No. MPS, any ideas? As an AT-AT? Uh, no. No, he was Lobot, actually. He was the bald guy. So, oh, uh, yeah, of course. Yes, because they're all bald. You know, all those dudes, you know. I've got to, yes. Yes. Yeah, strange object image in the Imperial Vortex. Oh, you got to know your quotes. All right, and Ajax, and lucky last, when you want answers quickly, what do you need to whip? <laughs> what do you need to whip out? All right, guys, what do you need to whip out? Um, I'm guessing ball worms. Very, very good. MPS, what do you reckon? Uh, core worms. Nah, ball worms. Not the ball worms. Oh, please, not the ball worms. Because we have no idea what the ball worms are. In the book, it's covered a little bit more as to what they are. Uh, and, of course, Clytus then later says to Flash that he actually thought she actually quite even enjoyed it. So, uh, uh, yeah, make of that what you will. But, yeah, not the ball worms. But it's, it's used to be like the old card. And it's like, oh, no, not the ball worms. Oh, yeah, all this sort of thing. So it was almost quite laughable. Not so the thinker. Go. Anything but the thinker. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. And that's the end of it. So is it the end? Remember at the end of the movie you said the end and yeah. had the question marks when uh, someone's picked up the ring, Ming's ring, as it were. So, uh Ah, uh, there, there's a lot more that could come out of that. And I'd be very curious to see what uh, the um, people watching this show. Uh, Robbie Coltrane has it. A, what? Has it a cameo at the start? Robbie Coltrane, cameo appearance. Yeah. Well, what role did he, what did he play in the uh, He's at the airport when they land and take off. Oh, because there's only one guy there. He's standing next to the yeah. truck. Yeah. Now, here's, here's a trivia question. You two won't know this. Okay, let's see how fast people are out there. The airport that they leave from. What's actually like um, it, it, the actual place? Not the name of the airport as such, but uh, it's on the written on the side of the van. So um, where are they living from? Because it's actually they actually mentioned it later on in the movie as well. So uh, uh, gotta love it. So I'll leave that one for you guys to figure that one out. So very 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 cool. So there you go. Uh, Dark Harbor was the answer to that question. So there you go. Very very good stuff. So everybody enjoy that. That was that was pretty mm. good. Fun, wasn't that? Yeah. So, Flash. I like that. Uh, yeah. actually, I always like the, um, uh, if you remember the intro sequence of the movie, because they had all the comics and they flat, all the comics were all sort of like merged together. And I think that was like long before Marvel and any of those sort of guys did it. So maybe they set that trend as well, which was uh, kind of groovy. So, uh, yeah, very good stuff. So there you go. Not the Horta. Back, what did I miss? Derek, what have you missed? You missed everything, mate. So it's all very good. Not the Mind Probe. Uh, having a problem playing this video. Not the host. Hey, yeah. Not the Horta. Yay. Very good. Okay. So, all right. So that's Flash Gordon. If you haven't got your DVDs, check it out and have a whale of a time. I uh, highly urge you to do that. Very, very cool. All right. Very good. And ironically, we ended up with 22 people watching tonight, even for a very Ooh. short period of time. So it's absolutely fantastic. And speaking of Kelvin timelines, we are going to be talking about Star Trek movies next week. So uh, there you go, because I've got a bone to pick. Uh, not, not a bone of contention so much, but certainly something worth bringing up. So there you go. Anyway, we're going to buzz off. Have a great uh, week. We'll see you next week. And make sure in the interim that you all <gasps> stay nerdy. Okay. Stay nerdy. Sure.